Hello, all my powerful Scorpio friends, wherever you are on this planet. Welcome. I'm Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer, and I have your magnificent forecast for May to share with you. Um, and it's it's a wonderful, powerful forecast. And we'll get to it in a second, but I've got an announcement I've got to make. Some of you have been asking me, when is your latest book coming out? Here it is. It's called Hidden Messages in Your Birth Chart. It is now available on Amazon and my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Um, many years ago, I wrote a book called Hidden Messages that was published by the American Federation of Astrologers. Um, I've learned a lot more about programming as seen in the birth chart. This is my passion. This is something I, I, I love. Um, and so this is the updated version. I've learned a lot over the years and I've updated some of the categories. I've uh, given three examples, uh, actual husband and wife examples. Um, if, if you find those interesting, I certainly hope they are interesting and informative. So this is my passion. Uh, it is available now, as I said, on Amazon or MaxineTaylor.com. When, uh, when I first started writing books, I didn't know what I was doing as far as publishing. And I happened to meet somebody who I have used for probably 10 years. Many of you are, are writers. You are astrology students, or you are professional astrologers, um, or, or not. Maybe you have written a book on gardening, on relationships, on money, and you really want to get this book out there, but you don't know how. And you're not sure you feel comfortable with some of the people who may have claimed to be able to help you. Well, you've asked me who I use and I turn to Denise Casino. That's two S's in Casino. I turn to Denise Casino um, and I'm sharing her with you because she is so good at what she does. Her um, website is bestsellerservices.com. Even if you have not put the first word on paper, she will work with you hand in hand to get you, get that book finished, to help you find an editor, a formatter, and she will get you published on Amazon. And if you like, she will get you to bestseller status in record time. I know she sounds almost too good to be true. What you see is what you get with her. She is wonderful. And I have recommended her to all kinds of people. And they thanked me because she has helped them move forward as an author. Perhaps you have used somebody and they were a great disappointment to you. They didn't deliver what they said. Maybe they charged too much. Maybe you gave them money and they're still hanging on to it and you haven't heard anything or seen anything from them. My suggestion would be just contact Denise. Uh, she is a very honorable person. Okay. You're going to love her. Now, Scorpio, the most powerful sign in the entire zodiac. Well, look at this right here. Ah, oh, how gorgeous is that? First of all, this area here is the seventh house of relationships. 
whether they're personal or business, you have been involved in going out to others uh, for at least a month. And it's going to continue. First of all, the sun, the giver of life, wherever the sun is, that's the area that comes alive. And that's partnership and relationships and your interaction with the public in general. On the 20th, it's going to move into your own house. It is going to move into the eighth house of secrets and privacy and transformation and the sun being the ego, your ego is going to go under a, tr a transformation. You'll get to the bottom of secrets. Why? Because the sun is the giver of life and the giver of light. And when you get the answer to those questions you're asking, keep them to yourself. Okay. Anything in the eighth house undergoes a transformation. You don't have to share that with anybody. And I think you know that better than anyone because you are great at keeping secrets. Venus, the planet of love and beauty and money is also, has also been in your seventh house. This creates warm and loving relationships. If there's somebody in your life who is very special to you, uh, you have put your attention on them. And that relationship has grown. If there's nobody in your life per se, you can still get out there and find somebody. And you love the one-on-one -on -one now. Okay. Venus, love. Sun, giver of life. With Venus in the seventh house, you love love, you love partnership and you attract people to you, and you are attracted to people who love themselves and are looking for love. Now, the third planet in the seventh house is Mercury, our conscious mind. It's what you think about and talk about. Whatever you think about and talk about, you manifest. So I'm gonna work this way. On the third of the month, Mercury moves into that eighth house and you are a psychic investigator. You are that naturally anyway. Uh, and it is truly activated starting on the third. Now Mercury is gonna go retrograde on the 29th. And that means things are gonna change. In fact, on the 15th of the month, it enters the shadow of the retrograde. And so it's going to feel like Mercury's retrograde, but it's not. You're not gonna start new projects on a retrograde Mercury. Instead, you're going to tie up the loose ends of unfinished projects, okay? And that is terrific because these unfinished projects deal with secrets. They can deal with uh, money, money held mutually. That's perfectly fine and your thinking will undergo a change. On the eighth, Venus, the planet of love, is going to enter the eighth house, which is your natural house. And so your love nature undergoes a change, your attitude about money, your attitude about mutually uh, productive uh, financial ventures. And on the 20th, last but not least, the sun, moves into that eighth house and your ego undergoes a change, a transformation, and you become the psychic detective. I love it, love it. Now, Mars, the red planet. Mars is what we fight with and fight for. It's um, passion, it's getting to the point. It's in your ninth house of the higher mind. You are fighting for your principles. You are fighting for truth. And when I say fighting, I don't mean with weapons. I mean uh, with words. You're taking a stand for your beliefs. Bravo to you. Uh, in a mundane chart, Mars can mean gunfire, but this is not a mundane chart. This is your forecast. And so you may find that you are, number one, wanting to 
keep that passport current because you're ready to hit the ground running, spread your wings and soar. You want, you're ready to travel. You might be interested in higher education as well. I'd love to see you go for that. And you're fighting for truth. And your principles are your truth. How magnificent is that? Now, the new moon, when things start moving forward, is on May 11th, okay? In your seventh house of partnership. And that's when things of a personal romantic nature or a business nature start moving forward again. Look for 21 Taurus in your birth chart because that's where this new moon uh, is and where the energy will start in your birth chart. Combine it with this solar chart and you have the big picture. Now, two weeks later, we have a full moon. It's not just any old full moon. It's a total lunar eclipse in the second house of your money. Oh, awesome. On a full moon, things come to a head. On a total eclipse of the moon, wow, double whammy. And this means that you should be able to refinance, rethink, and rework your own income and create more money. The, this particular eclipse is on the 26th of May in five degrees of Sagittarius. Look for five Sag in your birth chart and uh, apply this full moon that things come to a head in, with your birth chart. In other words, the eclipse in your solar chart is in your second house. In your birth chart, it's in a different house. You say, well, which house do I use? <clears throat> use both of them. And you have the big picture. And the full moon, the eclipse, is strongest three to four months after it occurs. We'll feel it about a week or two before it occurs. But after it occurs, that's when it's at its peak. So we'll talk about that three to four months from now. In the meantime, um, have a glorious full moon. Have a wonderful May. And may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.